where the second replaces the first. The second replaces the first. And it is always that case in the genealogy of Jesus. Always. And that is the doctrine of what we call divine election. God sovereignly choosing the second, even though the firstborn is supposed to get the blessing and the birthright, God says, I am making a divine election, and he's making a point, which is explained in 1 Corinthians 15, that the second man, Adam, I'm sorry, the first man, Adam, is of the dust, the second man, Jesus, is of heaven, and he replaces the first man. Okay? Just as Jesus is the true Israel. We have Israel, then we have the true Israel. I am the vine, you are the whatever, the, uh, the fruit. Okay? But in the Old Testament, Israel is the vine. Ezekiel uh, 26 or something. Anyway, so this is the, the doctrine of divine election. God making a choice contrary to everything else. Saying, I am in control of what's going on. So out came the hand, on went the scarlet made by the grubs. Everything points about Jesus. Every single thing in this book. And like I say, I wish that I had more time to just sit and think over every single passage in my head because eventually it is going to point to Jesus in some way or another. But we read so quickly through this. We're up to chapter 38 after, you know, whatever. And, but eventually we will, uh, uh, you know, we'll be able to peruse this book for eternity. And we're going to see marvelous things in it. Divine election and divine intervention. Divine intervention is the same thing, but it ends in divine election. In other words, God divinely inter, uh, intervened and had him stick out his hand. Somehow or another, it, it doesn't mean he actively did it, but he knew it would happen. God is intervening in human history for his purposes. Election is something that God is making a point about something, which eventually points to our salvation. Okay, It's a little bit different. It, they, they're tied in together. He's intervening to have something come about, but he has decided in advance that it will come about. Election, intervention. Um, uh, and Is it right to pray for divine intervention? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll, we'll talk about prayers in just a second. Let me uh, turn this thing off after we say a prayer. And um, I, I think the sermon that I was supposed to do yesterday, until I found out that I prepared for the wrong thing, has this account in it explained in detail. And if it does, it'll be coming in August. It'll be on 1 Corinthians 5, but I believe I refer to this there. I can't remember. Because um, I was so overwhelmed last week when I realized I'd done the wrong thing. Oh, what a stressful week it was. I mean, we had trouble at the house with one of the dogs. I got cold sores. I had a fever for three days. What a hard week it was. But apparently yesterday wasn't completely blown. But let's say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so, so very much for your word. Thank you for the mysteries and the wonders and the treasures. And thank you for righteous, faithful people like Tamar who suffered through the loss of two husbands and suffered through the loss of no child and yet you because you're a compassionate graceful God looked on her righteous heart and gave her a child and thank you above all for giving us of your own child Jesus who took away the sins of the world so that we can live in fellowship with you once again what an honor what a blessing what a God what a Savior in Jesus name we pray amen